I've never seen anybody use roofing nails to strap duct. So yeah, they strapped it up. They did a good job strapping it up, but you can see it's almost 90 right here. That's going to restrict the airflow a ton. Man, I've ever did this duct job. Needs a lesson. It wasn't us. Hey guys, it's Steven with Yarbrough and Sons, service manager. You know, we're heading out to a call today. Uh, we were out there about a month ago. A customer had called back in, said that there was a, there was an issue with the unit not running, not cooling properly. You know, this is a great opportunity for for me to go out there and you know make sure that when we were out there a month ago that everything was was done the way that it was supposed to be done. You know, hopefully we can get this thing straightened out and and get her going, and she won't have to call us back, and then we'll be back out in the fall to do her maintenance. All right, so we just got done talking to the customer. Um, she had stated that she keeps the thermostat set at 68 degrees. Uh, it was 74 in her house yesterday afternoon, and she has a hard time sleeping when it's 74 degrees. So we're gonna look over everything, um, see if there's anything that we can do to make that more comfortable for her. She had also mentioned that in the master bedroom, she's having some airflow issues, so we're gonna take a look at that too and, and see what we can do to help her out. So what we got here, it is a Linux ML14 um, straight air conditioner. It's a two and a half ton and it is three years old. It's a 2021 unit. Uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and get into it and uh, I'm going to take some amp draws. I'm going to go ahead and hook my gauges up to it, uh, check the pressures, see, see how we're looking. Uh, the customer did state that it was uh, making a noise that she hadn't heard before. Um, and so, you know, I can hear a little bit of a rattle, but nothing bad. So we'll see what's see what's going on with it and go from there. I'm going to go ahead and open her up now. My condenser fan motor is pulling 0.84 amps and it is rated for 1.0. So we're doing all right on that. See, my compressor is rated for 12.8 amps. On the common winding, we've got 6.5. On the run winding, we've got 5. Point, we'll say 5.2. And on the start winding, 5.5. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hook my gauges up to it and see what the pressures look like on it. Hook my high side up. And while I'm doing this, I'm gonna go ahead and crack this open just to make sure I don't get any air uh, into the system. And once it starts coming out through here, I'll close it up. There we go. And I'm going to do the same for my low side. So right now, our pressures are running about 123 on my suction side. I need glasses. I'm looking at about 285 on the high side. Currently, it is, according to iOS, it's 80 degrees outside. Um, using rule of thumb, it looks like it might be just a touch low on refrigerant. Um, won't know that until I get uh, my temperature probes hooked up. Um, but according to just using the rule of thumb, let's go ahead and take a look at the charge chart here on this thing. It says it's currently 80 degrees outside, which is a nice day for uh, beginning of August in Oklahoma. It looks like I need a seven degree subcooling. You look here, I got a two and a half ton and 030 and it's 80 degrees outside so between the 75 and the 85 which 75 and 85 are both the same so i need a seven degree sub cooling and then looking at my pressures again following this 030 going down here so i'm going to need between a 259 and a 301 head pressure and a 139 and 141 suction side so According to the charge chart, we are running a little bit low. Not, not too terribly low, but a little bit low. And so we'll hook up and, and see what we need to do on it. All right, guys, so what we found is that that system is running low on refrigerant. Um, 
I'm estimating one to two pounds low. Um, so right now what I'm doing is I'm gonna go ahead and work up an estimate in our uh, CSM and we'll present that to the customer, see what she wants to do. Um, if she wants us to go ahead and get it charged up, we'll go ahead and get it charged up and, and uh, you know get her, get her back up and cooling again. I've still gotta go up into the attic and take a look at that master bedroom duct just to see what we might be able to do to help her get a little bit more airflow in there, but I'm gonna start here. All right, since the customer had stated that she was having some issues with airflow in her master bedroom, we're gonna go ahead and go on up here into the attic, um, take a look, see if we could figure out what might be the situation there. A lot of times if the duct is the furthest one away from the system, uh, it'll have an issue. Um, depending on where it's placed on the plenum, at that point it could have an issue as well. Um, getting, getting airflow, just not enough static pressure to push it through. Um, and so, you know, there's a number of things that can be done for it. We can put dampers in, um, you know, we can, if, if it's a split off duct, we can make a home run. Um, you know, so there's a, there's a couple of things that we can, that we can do, but first we got to see what we got going on. Let's take a look and get bearings of where we're at. So the garage is over here. Children's rooms are over there. Laundry room. Man, I've ever did this duck job. Needs a lesson. It wasn't us. All right, so we're up here in our customer's attic, um, taking a look at the duct work. You know, she had mentioned her her master bedroom. So I'm looking at at some of this stuff and. You know, whoever put this ductwork in, they did a good job of, of strapping it up and, and getting these, uh, you know, getting these straps on it real well. Um, but there's a couple of areas of concern that I see. Um, the first one, and this would be one cause of concern for her master bedroom, is this right here. So yeah, they strapped it up. They did a good job strapping it up, but... You can see it's almost 90 right here. That's gonna restrict the airflow a ton. Um, so I'm gonna pull that out and, and see, what, see what I can do to, to straighten that up just a little bit, just to, just to help her out some. Um, if that doesn't help out a whole lot, the other thing that I'm seeing is in this back corner right here, that goes to her master bedroom. Um, and you can see we got a 10 coming off. And then it's wide off to two eights. One goes to the living room and one goes to the master bedroom. Um, so if straighten this up, um, you know, get the, get the kink out of it. If that doesn't work, um, you know, we may end up just taking this and, and going straight run of eight right there and then take this straight from the plenum to her master bedroom uh, to, to get, her, get her better airflow in that area. So, Right now, we're just going to go ahead and straighten up this uh, this duct. See what we can do about it. Oh, you know, the older I get, the less my knees like to bend. I gotta hit this one too. I know I got it kinked right now, but it's gonna get straightened up, I promise. Yeah, the, the, the 90 that was back there was, was causing a restriction in the airflow. Um, cutting, off, cutting off the airflow to the rest of the duct. Um, so getting that straightened out is gonna provide a little bit better airflow back to the, the master bedroom uh, where she was saying that she wasn't getting very good airflow at all so now go to the fun one here let's see what we can do with this when you have a duct kinked off like that it's a uh, it's a lot like getting a kink in your water hose um you know 
you shut it down and and yeah the velocity through that area is a little bit better uh, but the total volume is a lot worse and what we're looking at and what the customer's complaining about right now is the volume of airflow so you can see the difference this is a little bit more of a swooping bend right here as opposed to the kink that that was there um, so hopefully that'll get it get it straightened out a little bit and uh, you'll help help her out um, you know luckily it hadn't bent the flex too bad um, and so straighten it back out was a was a doable thing so we're gonna go back down there the unit shut off it's satisfied now so we're gonna go back down there um, we're gonna go ahead and present the the options for repair to the customer um, for this right here, you know, it didn't take me more than more than 10 minutes to do. Um, so, you know, I'll just let her know as a as a benefit of being a maintenance member um, that, you know, I went ahead and took care of this on the house for. Um, and so we'll get back down there. We'll take a look and, and see what she wants to do as far as the, the refrigerant levels. Get this unit fired back up uh, and uh, and get her charged up if that's what she wants. Now, let's see if I can do this without busting my butt. Oh, I got one more thing here. Now, I forgot to mention this. One thing that I noticed when I come up here, and it looks like this is to the master bathroom um, and maybe a closet. Um, but this duct right here, you can see this gas line that runs along here and goes to the, to the furnace there. It actually comes up right here. And what's happened is they've got this thing twisted up and it's actually pushing down on um, on this duct that's going to what I'm assuming is the, the master bathroom right there. Um, and so let's see if we can do anything to, to assist in that situation while we're up here as well. And it may be a situation where I might have to call the plumbers out to straighten that up, but Let's see what we can do for her. I've never seen anybody use roofing nails to strap duct. Typically what we do is, is we'll leave a little bit more slack on there and we'll be able to tie it around as opposed to using a roofing nail, which uh, apparently the roofing nails work. I've just never seen it before. It's just a, an interesting method. Okay, there's that gas line I was talking about how it's just kind of running a loop there and it was pushing up against the inside of this Y right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take one strap back over here and, and kind of hold it up right there. Um, you know, everything else, yeah, they had it strapped real good up, up front there, but it's holding itself up right there. Um, and the strap from here to here, you know, less than four feet, that's not going to, that's not going to sag or anything along those lines. So I'm going to go ahead and get this strap tied while I'm while I'm up here as well. There we go. Look, I got a few roofing nails to boot. I'm going to go ahead while I'm up here. I'm going to take a picture of this uh, evaporator cool. Um, get the model and serial number off of it, just so I know that we've got it and I'll be able to put it in our system. Perfect. Let's see. open this bad boy up here real quick I noticed in our system on one of these we had a, a number or a letter wrong on it so I want to make sure I've got everything correct um, that way the next person that comes out here is is going to be be able to know what they're what they're getting into outstanding all straighten back out hopefully be getting a little bit better airflow to the to the master now let's go downstairs and we'll present the option for repair to her and see what she wants to do ouch all right well we got her taken care of um like I said ended up with an 18 degree temperature split uh the system is is running at um peak capacity peak efficiency right now um, you know, I'm going to get back to the office a little bit later on and get her a quote on some duct work repairs. 
uh, that we noticed while we were up in the attic. So again, this call started out as uh, you know a customer had called us and said that she was having an issue, and we were out here about a month ago. Um, you know, after reviewing everything, after looking over the system, um, you know, it, it, it could have been just a uh, an oversight on our part on on not accurately looking at the at the refrigerant pressures and and not completely understanding what we were seeing. Um, but we came back out here, got the customer taken care of. Um, you know, she's happy, we're happy, um, and. Uh, whenever we have a call back we like to know what we did wrong we like for the customer to call us and and not just you know not just uh not just call to yell and say they got somebody else out but you know we like an opportunity to get back out here and and you know see where we messed up if we messed up and and you know get the get the customer taken care of and and that leaves everybody satisfied